What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Jeez. This week we have been raining pips. I'm just just like this week has been a good week. That's all I can say. Um majority of my focus has been on GJ, but today I took a trade on GU and the reason for that was because GJ was ranging. So was GU but not as much, but I'm going to go through the trades anyway. I took a um buy first. And we'll talk about what happened with that. And then I'll talk about the sell immediately after. But before we do, let's roll the intro. All right, guys. So normally I wake up around 5 a.m., something like that. Sometimes 4.35 a.m. Usually not later than 5.30 a.m. <laughs> right? This morning, I woke up really late, 7.45, something like that. And the first thing I did this morning was ask the group, what did I miss? Because usually, you know, by 6 o'clock, you get in some volume in the market, momentum starts to shift and blah de blah de blah And I thought I missed everything. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll just wait for London Open or we'll just wait for New York Session. They said nothing was popping, so I came to the charts, took a look at GUGJ, EU and UJ and I didn't find anything too great and then my eyes got stuck on GU so I asked the group you know there's a lady in the group her name is Chantel and she is phenomenal at trading GU so that was the first thing I did let me show you so I said to Chantel this morning are you seeing GU as bullish and she never replied to me you know you can see the time up there 8 15 right she never replied to me Alex then said, yep, I'm personally looking for a long on GU or I'm in a long on GU. I'm break even secured at the moment. And I was like, smashed it. And then we have Stubbsy down there. The absolute legend. Legend. He makes me look like a bad trader, put it that way. But he said he was in buys and I was like, this is good. So I decided, guess what? Let me go in for the buys. So let's head back to the charts. So I started off on the hourly time frame. Oh, wait a minute. Let me talk to you about this very quickly. You might be thinking, what's all this red here? Well, yesterday's analysis, so pre-New York Open, um, I put this analysis out to the community just as a potential trading setup. Mark the major high, the consolidation, the breakout of this structure. And when we was looking at this market structure, I think by the time I posted the analysis, this is how it looked. So I said, if price breaks above this high here around 28.46, I'm going to be looking for a buying opportunity. Well, I wasn't personally, I already had traded GJ, so I was done for the day. But whoever wanted to look for a buying opportunity, that's what you're going to be looking for. This was the current high. Uh, wait a minute. Come over here. So this was the current high. And uh, of course, we're not going to buy the market into a high, right? We're buying at the bottom after the breakout and the retest or we're waiting for the break above structure i have a screenshot of this let me show you very quickly so yes this i sent out at 11:36 in the um rocks and uh, rocks fx analysis and setups channel and uh this is what it looked like actually price had already broken out excuse me so after this breakout i said we're waiting for the retest and look for this continuation buys so let's go back to the charts so after price broke out of this structure, we was waiting for price to come back for this retest of the structure. And as you can clearly see the retest here. And uh, if we scale down to our lower time frames, you'll see this as a beautiful break and retest of the structure. And then obviously if you're taking trades, you can target some of these highs up here. Let's remove this red now. And uh, however you decide to trade it is up to you, but you can target some of these highs for a potential trading opportunity. And as you can clearly see, price came back so that's basically using the hourly waiting for the breaker structure waiting for price to come back to that key levels of retest and then look here we uh would have got in a nice trade let's say we took the trade here and whatever doesn't matter not the point today but yes that's what happened so let's get back over to the trade that we took today so yes so this is how i'm looking at the structure of the market this morning okay so i'm seeing that structure had broken this high um, I can see that price has now failed to make a new high. So if you saw yesterday's video, price is failing to make a new high. And I started to see price push the downside and break this structural low. So once I saw price breaking this structural low, I decided to 
put my level actually let me keep it real with you so the first position was a buy so for the buying position i saw that price had broken above this structure now at this stage um in the back of my mind i was just like yeah look if we've broken above this structure we could be coming back to retest some of these structural highs around 28.98 and um before we see the market even break out of this sideways moving market so it was at this time that i decided to take the buying opportunity and uh, I checked with the group to see who was taken and let me show you what happened. Okay, so as you can see here, Stubbsy the man, exactly the same trade. The Matthew said, come on, bro, he's in the trade also. And I said, I'm in the exact same trade. So free traders in this trade this morning. There were a couple others, I do believe, but uh, these are the ones that came forward. And I was just like, let's go, baby. I was just all for it. Anyway, back to the charts. So once I was in this trade, I was messaging Stubbsy and I was just saying to him, look, we're in this trade. What's happening? Have we got it to break even yet? And I said, no, stop loss is at half. I didn't get the screenshots of those, but stop loss was at half. And then eventually, eventually, let's remove this, man, because this makes it look crusty. Eventually, you know, I was just like, no, the momentum is not pushing up. We are just struggling a bit. OK, so we came back down. I was still in this position at this time. Price then tried to push up again. I saw the wick rejection. And then around this time, I was like, you know what? I'm closing this position. I don't like it. I'm not seeing the momentum. I'm not seeing the volume. Let's get out of this trade and let's see what's happening. So let me show you what happened. So as you can see here around 8.22, I said I closed GU buys. I said, I don't think there's enough volume and momentum to get this rolling. Good luck to those that are still in it. So back to the charts. So I closed this trade out and thank God I did. Immediately when I closed this trade, I went back over to the Audi time frame and I reanalyzed this market structure. OK, so how I was analyzing it just a minute ago before I took the buys and said that I was lying, I reanalyzed it again. And look what we see here on this market structure. So we see a trend to the upside on the hourly. We see a structural high where price is failing to break. Then the strong momentum shift down, the break of the previous low and the retest. So I reanalyzed Okay, adapt. This is what you guys want to do as traders and ladies. Adapt. Don't have a fixed mindset. Don't say because I'm looking for a buy, now I must stick to the buy. Do you understand? If you feel like you've made the wrong, wrong analysis or you see that price action is just not working out or going in your favor, then let it go. Move on. Come back. Okay, so I came back. Reanalyze. We're no longer looking at the break of this high to come back to this structure. We're seeing the wick rejections. Now it's time to change our bias or see if we should be changing our bias so at this stage i decided to put it in the group and let them know what i was doing let me share that with you very quickly so over to this screenshot as you can see here matthew said that it was close to his break even wasn't the best conditions which we all in the group analyzed and just was like okay cool so i said um well 19 minutes ago whatever time that was at the time so you can see the time there 8 25 after i'd closed my trade which was 823 and consider reversing my bias looking at the 1h seeing this as a retest lower high formation so many rejections indicating bearish pressure i just thought we had enough range to get back to at least 2892 which was the high that i said of that range then i said i'm waiting for confirmation of that myself now waiting to see how the 15 minute closes i'm looking for a sell stop entry okay so back to the charts so that's exactly what I did. I went down to the 15 minute time frame. Remember, I already closed this trade out at break even. And now I'm looking at this as a break retest multiple wick rejections. So in the back of my head, when I took this trade, I said to myself, we're pushing bullish. If this candle reje uh, rejects, closes bearish, then I'm going in. So what I did once price was bullish in and around this level, I set my sell stop below the wick that was there. So there was a wick in and around this area. This price was bullish up here. And I set my sell stop. And uh, as you can clearly see, the rest was history. Price just continued pumping to the downside. So imagine if I held this buy, you know, and it hit a stop loss, unnecessarily lost money when I realized really early on that the momentum was not to the upside at this moment in time, it was to the downside. Reverse my position, set the sell stop and took the trade. And you know, look, stop loss was above this key level here. 
I was happy. I didn't need it above this uh, wick. If price is going to continue to push up and you know what, break back through or above this structure, then I just want to be out of this trade. And as you can see here, I managed to bank one to three. On my first position, I did actually close out with a very small loss because of commissions, but it is what it is. You know, we're not going to cry about it. Then took the second position on GU. And as you can see here, we absolutely obliterated take profit. So that really was my morning. That was my trading. Now I'll be waiting for the New York session. And by the time you watch this, it'll be in the evening. The New York session will be over. But just a few lessons to take from this. You know, if you see that the market is doing something, the trade that you take or plan to take, you take with confidence, just like I took this buy. So even if my analysis on the Audi time frame was skewed a bit and I saw this as a buying opportunity because I had my key level in and around here. Then once I scaled down, look into the 15 minute time frame, I saw this as a break above structure and I didn't have this key level in here. My confidence or whether I'm right or wrong, the confidence behind taking this trade was it was a buy. So going for the buy. So I went in. But what you have to learn to do, guys, is you have to understand that if you take a trade, and the momentum is supposed to shift in your direction, then in theory, you don't want to stay in the markets if the market pushes up and then starts to show rejections and starts coming back down. Just no need for it. It's better that you save or protect your capital, risk before reward, and then reanalyze or re-enter the position. Take a break-even trade or take small profits, get out and wait for a new position. But what you must always do as well, okay, if you close a trade because for whatever reasons, let's say you see the wick rejections, don't then just look and stay here and be like, oh, now, yeah, it's time to sell. Don't do that. Go back to your higher time frames again. Quickly analyze, reanalyze. It should only take you five seconds, just like I did. And then say to yourself, well, OK, fine. Structure's up. High. High wasn't broken. Higher low was formed. Higher high is not formed. Break below this previous structure. This right here is the bearish momentum. This is the pullback. And guess what? We have the hourly close wick rejection. My buy bias was wrong. I was comfortable taking it, but it was wrong. Now it's time to analyze and look for a selling opportunity. And look what happened. I found the sell. When taking the trade, check your range from when you're planning to sell. Back down to the lows. 22 pips is huge if I'm using a 7 pips stop loss. And I took the trade and you can see what happened. Don't get greedy as well though. Remember yesterday when I showed you my GJ trade? Don't get greedy. There is no point targeting a... 1 to 5 or a 1 to 10 or a 1 to 7 when you can clearly identify in and around this level here and this level here that price is not breaking. That's why we always check the range because after my take profit was hit, look what happened. And this happened exactly on GJ. So when setting targets, mark your key levels as well. Look what happened. Price reacted, flew to the upside. So imagine now you was targeting some of these lows just because you wanted to make a quick buck or a big buck off of this trade. Look what happens. And that's why I always go for one to three reward ratio. But anyway, I'm rambling on now. That was my GU trade. That was a process of that trade. And I hope you found this useful. Now, family, I need to ask you to do something for me. Please smash that like button as hard as you can. Subscribe if you haven't. And as I always say... Take care and until next time, peace.